We love God. We love his spirit. But the human side of us sometimes gets in the way. Sometimes we feel distant from God. Sometimes we find ourselves in addiction. Sometimes we need a refill of God's presence within us. And one powerful way to seek God for a fresh filling of his Holy Spirit power is to do what Moses did, to do what Jesus did, what the apostles did. Pray and fast. Now, this episode is going to be a little bit different from what we've done before. We're going to split this message into three sections. First, we're going to look at how fasting was done in the Bible. And then we will look at how fasting affects our spirit and our body. And then we will specifically look at how to fast step by step so that we will do it in the most effective and safe way. So this is going to be very important. And so let's begin. So what is fasting? Simply put, fasting is when you set aside something that your body enjoys so that you can grow spiritually. Usually in the Bible, the most common thing that people would set aside was food. And let's face it, if there's anything that we like, it's food. And so when God sees that you want so much of him that you are willing to sacrifice something like food, oh, oh, it moves the heart of God. And it allows for us to feed the most important part of us, our spirit. Look at what God said through the prophet Joel. Even now, declares the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. God honors when we are willing to return to him and put him before our body. When we sacrifice our appetites, it does something powerful in the spiritual realm. God honors it. And it is important to note that fasting is not just about missing a meal. It's not just like going on a diet. No, fasting is really all about seeking God and drawing closer to him. When the prophet Isaiah was teaching, he explained that it is important that we fast in a way that honors God. In Isaiah 58, he lets the people of Israel know that their fast was not honored because they just did as they pleased while they were fasting. Look at what he says. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please. You exploit all of your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. The principle here is when you fast, change your schedule. You have to change your mind. It's a time of seeking God more than ever. If you're fasting, and your prayer life is not changing, your seeking of God is not changing, you're not fasting, you're dieting. And so if you're going to seek God more than ever, that may mean that during a time of fasting, you may have to cut back on the television, take a break from games, start reading the Bible, that's a big one, and binge watch Jesus content instead of fantasy movies. Fasting is about abnormally putting God first above everything. And you may wonder, do I really have to fast? Well, let me ask you this. How much of God do you want? 
Do you want his spirit to work powerfully through you, to lead you? I mean, that's the question. How much of God do you want? Look at Jesus. He fasted. And since Christ is our model, how much more should we? Now, why is Jesus our model? Well, when Jesus died on the cross, he allowed us in a way to become the body that he sacrificed. The scriptures say that we now have his spirit living within us, which allow us to literally now be the body of Christ on earth. You know, because the spirit of Christ is within us. And so your earthly life now is a parallel of the earthly life of Christ. It's, it's really deep when you, when you really think about it. This is why if, if, if you're now the body of Christ, his spirit is within you. And so your life now must parallel his life. Now you see why if Jesus got baptized, we also should be baptized. If Jesus prayed, of course, we also must pray. And if Jesus fasted, we should also follow his example by fasting as well. Matthew chapter four, verse one. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Jesus fasted. And we see in the scripture that Jesus lived a lifestyle of fasting. And he taught his followers to do so as well. In Matthew 6, 16, he says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father in heaven who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So first of all, notice that Jesus didn't say if you fast. When he was talking to them, he said when you fast. And so therefore it is implied that believers are expected to fast. Just as we pray, we are expected to fast. And he shows here a principle that when you fast, don't make it obvious. Don't show off as the religious people do. Don't try to go and show off in front of people. Oh, I'm so holy, bragging about it. No, keep it to yourself. Keep it between you and God. And if you do so, as Christ says, your Father in heaven will reward you. And we also see more reasons why Jesus fasted in Matthew chapter 17. Jesus was a man of power. He was known for healing the sick and being able to cast out evil spirits that had possessed people. And in chapter 17, Jesus was able to cast out an evil spirit from a child. And his disciples, they saw this and they wondered how he was able to do that because they had previously tried to cast out the evil spirit and they couldn't do it. And so they asked Jesus, you know, how were you able to cast the spirit out? But we couldn't. And look at what Jesus says to them. Matthew 17, 21, KJV. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And again, we see that this same event is described in Mark chapter 9, verse 29. And again, he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And so here we see another example of how Jesus fasted. And because of that, he had a greater spiritual ability. 
And I know someone may say, well, Jesus is the Almighty. Can't he just do anything? Well, we have to remember that Jesus came to us in a human body. And so he did the things that we as humans have to do to be used by God. And one of them, as Jesus practiced and demonstrated, is fast. And we see that after Jesus ascended to heaven and poured his spirit out on those who followed him, they too began fasting. Look at what happened in Acts chapter 13. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. It was after fasting that the Holy Spirit said, now I am ready to use Barnabas and Saul for the work I have for them. The Holy Spirit spoke to them. And so when we ask, you know, do I really have to fast? The question is, are you ready for the Holy Spirit to speak to you? There is an assignment on your life. God has a work for you to do. And, you know, sometimes we are always waiting on God. But in reality, God is often waiting on us to worship him, to pray. And sometimes he's waiting on us to fast. And then the Holy Spirit will speak to you and tell you where to go. Acts chapter 13, verse 3. And so after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Again, in Acts 14, we see fasting. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. And so here we see that they also fasted before committing others into the work of the Lord. And so we see in these uh, chapters here the value of fasting as being a critical part of being in service to God. You could almost say fasting creates an atmosphere for people to move into their ministry. Now, in Mark chapter 2, Jesus breaks down fasting even further, and he compares it to uh, new wine being poured into new wine skins. And so that's so deep and we don't have time to get into that very complex subject here. But if you go to AOCnetwork.org and then you click on exploring the Bible series and then you go to where it says Patreon videos, you can watch our study video on that subject. And it's pretty deep and I believe you will enjoy that. And so now let us discuss what happens to our spirit and our body when we fast with biblical fasting the maximum one uh, is shown to fast in scripture is around 40 days and so that has to be brought up because i know some of you are going to be so amped up that you know you're going to say well if jesus fasted 40 days then i'm going to fast 40 days too and you know that it's a very long time and so, you know, we have to remember that Jesus was led to fast that long. Moses also was led to fast that long. And he was in the very presence of God, like in a physical way, sustaining him. And so it's it's not something you do because you think, well, well hmm, 40 days, that, that's a good idea. You know, it's something you have to be really pushed and driven to do by God. And nowhere in Scripture do we see anyone fasting more than 40 days. In fact, it is likely that if you were to fast for more than 40 days, that you would be heading towards extremely dangerous levels. In fact, what we usually see in Scripture and what most believers practice today um, are much shorter fasts. Many go on a three-day fast or even better, a seven-day fast. Some go on 14-day fast or even a 21-day fast. And God honors all of these and they are beneficial in many ways, especially anything between a seven and 21-day fast. So again, anyone 
thinking of going 40 days, you know, I would just exercise extreme discernment with that and caution and prayer. You know, I know some just jump into things and we want to make sure that we are always led. And in fact, medically speaking, it is interesting. Scientists say that the body can survive without food for 30 to 40 days, only if you are properly hydrated with plenty of water Around after 30 to 40 days, the body begins to enter extreme dangerous levels of starvation and one can experience organ failure. That also depends on how much body fat you had before you even began fasting that long. But yes, the body uh, can go without food for a while when it is properly hydrated. In fact, I think a good example of what the human body can sustain is um, Gandhi. He, for political purposes, went without food for 21 days with only water. He survived it. So just from a healthy standpoint, yes, the body can go without food. I know many of you are concerned about that. And of course, if you know that you have some underlying health issues and that you have to monitor certain things within your body, talk to your physician about how your body may be able to handle fasting in the best way. But it must be said that many studies do show that going without food for a time can have health benefits. For one, Fasting helps to break the addiction to bad, unhealthy eating habits that we develop over time. There's something about seeking God through fasting that just empowers you to set aside things that normally you just you just wouldn't be able to do. Fasting gives the body a chance to consume the gunk and junk that we've been feeding it. Old food residue that is within our bodies that has been collected. Fasting allows the body to eat that bacteria and to consume all of that old residue and to clean out toxins from the food that we have been consuming. And so during a fast, there is a, a, a cleansing that will take place, not only within your body, but also within your tongue. Um, your taste buds will be renewed. You will, after a fast, begin to enjoy natural foods in a way that you could not have imagined. An apple will be like dessert. And these are just some of the physical benefits of fasting. Spiritually, it's even more beneficial. You see, fasting is really about starving the flesh or the physical body and instead feeding the spirit. It's about becoming a balanced human again. As long as you have an earthly body, we need to fast from time to time to decrease the lusts and the cravings of the body and to increase our cravings for the things of the spirit. Fasting will allow your spirit to be fed and you will find that you will start craving the things of God more. And that's an amazing state to be in because there is no negative side to feeding the spirit. So specifically, how do we fast? The main thing that we must do during a fast is seek God with all of our heart, with abnormal zeal. True fasting is when you use the time that you would have used to prepare meals and eat for time with God. You are showing God that he is more important than your belly. During a fast, wake up earlier and have prayer time with God, as Jesus often did. Now, before you begin a fast, I know some of you may be starting a fast tomorrow, um, uh, but if you, you know, have some time between now and when you will fast, ideally, you will want to eat very, very healthy leading up to a fast, mainly fruits, vegetables, water. And the reason why is because whenever you fast, you're going to get intense withdrawal symptoms. We just got to live with it. It's going to happen. Your stomach's going to ache. You're going to be lightheaded for a while. You're going to have really bad headaches. And the reason why is because many of us are addicted to food and ingredients like caffeine. 
But if you eat very healthy about a week leading up to a fast, um, you're, you're going to still experience some withdrawals, but um, you will experience less intense withdrawals. And so that's just a heads up. You know, the body will fight you in this. But once you get over that withdrawal hump, you will thrive in this. And finally, your spirit will control you, not your body. So what type of fast should you do? Well, that is between you and God. Um, he is the one who will lead you and give your spirit the right idea about how many days you should fast and what type of fast you should partake in. Uh, some people are led to fast for three days. Some people are led to fast seven days, 10, 14, 21, even 40 days. And so you have to seek God for guidance on how long you should fast. And he will give you peace and confidence about it. Types of fast. What types of fast are there? There's three main types we're going to cover here. Uh, the first one is what is referred to as a sunset fast. With this fast, uh, you only eat one meal per day after sunset. Uh, one reason why is because with Jewish days after sunset, that's the end of the day in a way. So basically you just spend the whole day seeking God, prayer, studying the word, watching Jesus content like you're doing right now. And um, then after sunset, you eat. And it is very common and beneficial for believers uh, to practice what is referred to as the Daniel fast at the same time as a sunset fast to eat in that way. What am I referring to? Well, there was a point in scripture where for 10 days, uh, Daniel only ate vegetables, fruit and water to honor God and to seek God. And at another point, he did this for 21 days and God greatly honored him and blessed him with great revelation and visions, as you know. And so it is very beneficial to do a Daniel type of eating during the sunset fast. In your one meal, that meal would only consist of vegetables, fruits, and water. No meats, no breads, no sweets, no soda, none of that. We see that Daniel, he mourned. And we know why, <laughs> because he wasn't eating what he wanted. The King James Version in Daniel chapter 1 verse 12 says that he only ate pulse, which would basically include foods that, you know, we grow such as fruit and vegetables and water. And so the Daniel fast is really not that complicated. Sometimes, you know, we ask questions like, well, well can I have dairy products? Can I have milk? No, it's vegetables, fruit and water. That's it. Now, of course, fruit could include fruit juice, you know, but, you know, we often overcomplicate things, you know, you know, we try to do Daniel fast casseroles and all these fancy dishes to make it taste good. But actually, it's not supposed to taste good. You know, this is a time of mourning rather than creating new recipes and spending more time cooking. No, it's about not doing that. It's about sacrifice and spending our time seeking God, not trying to make green beans taste good. OK, so keep it simple. OK, and I recommend eating that one meal after sunset. And after sunset is great because then, of course, you can spend the whole day to not even think about food, but only about your walk with God and get the most out of your fast. The second type of fasting that is really the main way that the people of God in Scripture fasted is the full day fast. That's right. Full day. OK, 24 hours. That's no food, only water. Yeah. Now, there are some who will practice a four day fast and they will uh, have uh, water and fruit juices. You know, many uh, will do that. But again, that's something that you have to pray about and seek God on. What exactly is he calling you to specifically fast from? That's what, between you and God. There's no food on that type of fasting. Not really anything too complicated there. Just don't eat, drink water. <laughs> um, and the third type of fast is the specialized fast. OK, the specialized fast is a type of fast where the Holy Spirit leads you to fast from certain foods, drinks or even certain actions for a period of time so that you can seek him with everything you have. And the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you with the right ideas about what you need to set aside as you seek God during a fast. Um, you're going to want to stay very, very hydrated. Drink plenty of water, at least eight glasses a day. That will help to flush out your system. and It will help you to get through this much better. Those are the three main 
uh, ways to fast that we see. For many of you, that isn't too much new information. But what is rare and kind of new that we don't hear many talk about is how we should eat once the fast is over. This is very important, especially if you're going on a longer fast, anything more than seven days, you're going to want to make sure that you safely end that fast. You see, fasting can place your body in such a purified state that if you immediately end a fast and then start just eating meat and bread and unhealthy foods, you know, people have died from that. Especially if you go on a really long fast, you know, you go on a 21 day no food fast and then you celebrate with a junk food feast. That would be very, very bad for you. And if you don't die, you will feel like you're going to. And so uh, if you have been doing a fast, it is important to get your body used to food again. And so the first few days, three, four days after a fast, try to eat very, very light, not many calories. Only eat soups, fruits and vegetables. Give your body a chance to adjust to food again with small portions. And then after that time, you can start to resume normal eating, but healthy eating. You know, I mean, during a fast, this is your chance to overcome food addictions and you're you're going to have a clean and pure body. So the last thing God would want us to do is to clean his temple and then return to bad eating habits. That's killing us. And I'm just going to say this. Some of us are killing ourselves with how we eat killing ourselves and we know it listen we cannot look down on someone who is addicted to crack or cigarettes if we are addicted to french fries and fried food because it doesn't matter what the substance is if it's killing you satan's gonna win satan doesn't care if he kills you with a crack pipe or with a slice of pizza he just wants you dead. He just doesn't want to see God's will done in your life. He's going to try to kill you by any means. And it may be with food. I know this is a tough message because I'm speaking to someone here. But many of us have been killing ourselves with food. And God says enough is enough. It's time for my people to purify themselves and prepare for me to work through them. But I can't do that if they are addicted to what's going to put them in an early grave. Satan will not win, and this is why we're going to fast. After your fast, eat in a way that honors the temple of God. Focus on eating smaller portions, more fruits, more vegetables, and drink more water. We got Google. It's easy to research how to eat healthy. There's no excuse these days. We know what to do and God will give you the power to do it. Now, if this is so new to you, fasting, and you want to enter this, but you don't know if you're ready to do a full, you know, seven day, full day fast, one thing that you can do is these three types of fasting, you can actually combine them and mix them up, you know, as the Holy Spirit leads you. Um, I myself have sometimes practiced the sunset fast for a few days and then transitioned into a full day fast. God honors that because you're still setting aside things that the body wants to feed his spirit. He loves that you're seeking him and setting things aside and, and sacrificing. So you can mix it up, mix it up to what God is leading you to do. But again, whenever you're done with it, uh, don't just binge eat terrible food as a celebration because that can really mess you up. And if you haven't seen our recent fasting commentary video on the dangers of eating the wrong foods after a fast, please see that video. It's so important. It's in our commentary section. Uh, great content there on the dangers of eating bad um, after a fast. So definitely check that out. And the last thing I will say on this is that when you are fasting, be vigilant. Satan knows that you are seeking God. He knows that you are about to be empowered for the kingdom. And so he will try everything that he can to stop you. And we know that Jesus, who modeled the Christian life, demonstrated how during a fast, the enemy will try to tempt you to sin and will try to tempt you to cheat on your fast. And so expect it. 
Remember, the biggest temptation of Christ came while he was fasting. And so that is a lesson for us because we know that, you know, Jesus was perfect. And so, of course, he didn't give in to that temptation to break his fast. But with us being imperfect and being prone to making mistakes, it's possible that some of us could slip up during fast. OK, it's possible. And if you do fall, if you end up eating a French fry, whatever happens, don't give up on your fast. Whatever happens during your fast, don't let it cause you to drop out. No, you come back stronger than ever. You repent, you dust yourself off, and the next day you continue seeking the Lord with everything you have during your fast. So many of us have had moments where we have fallen during a fast and then we just gave up and didn't continue the fast. And that's what the enemy wants. He doesn't want you to get what God wants to give to you. He doesn't want you to break free and break out of chains. But I'm here to say this. Whenever you fall, do not tap out. No, that's when you go harder than ever. That's when you seek God even stronger. And you will not lose your reward because God is honoring the fact that you are seeking him. And what pleases him is that you are determined to finish your fast no matter what. Fasting is a time that you set aside to go into battle with your flesh. And this is a lifelong thing that we do because the war between the spirit and the body won't completely be over until when? Well, when Jesus returns and then we are raised and we receive a new body, and then the body won't ever be a problem for us anymore. But in this age, we fight the flesh, we suppress the flesh, and we fast. So get serious about it. Set the date on the calendar and commit to it as soon as the Holy Spirit leads you to do it. And for much more on the details of fasting, be sure to visit aocnetwork.org. And in our Bible study resources, you will find the fasting guide. And it breaks down even more about this. And it will be a great read for you um, during your time of fasting. And stay tuned. We have an upcoming video on walking in the spirit. But before that, we will also have a video on, well, you'll see. God bless you.